Hello friends, in this video we are going to talk about General Electrical Safety Management or GESM. Particularly in this part 1, we will be talking about electric shock. So let's begin. First, let us see how an electric shock occurs. For an electric shock to occur, there should be a flow of current through a human body. And current only flows when there is a difference of potential from one part of the body to another part of the body. In this example, we can see that this particular person is touching a live naked wire. So this portion, the hand of this person, it becomes a relatively higher potential while the foot is at a ground potential that is zero potential. So there is a difference of potential from the hand to the foot and once there is a difference of potential, the current will start flowing through the human body. It will enter through the hand and it will exit through the foot and once there is a flow, we feel electric shock. Right? Now let us see what is effect of electric shock on, on human body on different magnitude of current. Like 0.5 to 3 milliampere current, it will give us just a tingling sensation and nothing else. will be perfectly fine. But 3 to 10 milliampere, our muscles will start contracting and will feel pain. 10 to 40 milliampere, it is called as a let go threshold. Now let go threshold, it actually means that the victim, the person who got shock of around 40 milliampere, he won't be able to rescue himself. This is called as let go threshold. And 30 to 75 milliampere, this could lead to the respiratory paralysis. Now this is dangerous. 100 to 200 milliampere of electric shock, it will cause a ventricular fibrillation. Now this is a condition when the heart of the human body, it starts beating abnormally and very fast and this could be a fatal. 200 to 500 milliampere, the heart clamps very tight and if the flow of current is more than 1500 milliampere, the tissues and the organs of the human body, it starts to burn. Now as a general and as a standard, as per standard, electric shock of 30 milliampere and more, more than 30 milliampere, it is considered to be dangerous and fatal. And the current that flows through the human body, it will depend upon the resistance of the body. Right? Now, let us see a uh, human body resistance. Like in this example, we can see the this is uh, the resistance of the hand, the resistance of the foot, the resistance of the upper portion of the body. This is all tentative resistance. It is somewhat around. 500 ohms and 100 ohms, 500 ohms for the foot and we have the resistance of the skin. Like in this picture you can see the human anatomy is like that. We have a layer of the skin and we have a layer of fat and we have a layer of muscle. So what we are talking about is this thin layer, the layer of the skin. This is our skin, means resistance of the skin. We are talking about the resistance of this thin layer only. Now this plays a very vital role when a person get electric shock. Let us see how. Now if a person is in dry condition, his skin is dry, in that case this resistance will be around 1 lakh to 6 lakh ohms. Now please note that we are talking about this resistance of this tiny layer of skin. It is a very thin layer of skin, although it seems quite big in this picture but the layer of the skin is actually very thin and we are talking about this resistance only this resistance so in dry condition the resistance is around 1 lakh to 6 lakh ohm however in wet condition it reduces very drastically and it is around 1000 ohms this resistance in wet condition when the skin is wet it is around 1000 ohms so let us try to calculate the resistance let us take this example once again this is the same example when the person gets electric shock and the current enters through the hand and it flows through the body and it exits through the foot. So in that case, the current will enter at this point. So it will take this path and it will exit this point. So what is the resistance faced by the current? 
R skin, R skin, two times R skin plus 500, 500 and 100. So two times R skin plus 1100 ohms. So this comes out to be around for dry skin. If we take the least value one lakh ohm, so for dry skin this value comes out to be two lakh 1100 ohms. However, if the same scenario we talk about in wet skin, when the skin is wet, the resistance of uh, skin is around 1000 ohm and the resistance faced by the current in this path this would be around 2 into 1000 plus 1100 around 3100 ohms right so let us see let us see this person gets the shock from this point the current flows from here to the foot so let us see the magnitude of current flowing through his body in dry condition in dry skin what will happen let us say the voltage is 220 volt the current through the body will be ohms law current is equal to voltage upon resistance so 220 volt upon resistance 2 lakh 1100 so this comes 1.1 milliampere now we have seen it 1.1 milliampere comes in this way so we'll have just a tingling sensation just a tingling sensation and nothing else and uh, it will be perfectly fine however in wet condition the scenario will be totally different in wet condition we'll have a 70 milliamps of current flowing through the body and this comes out in this range where we can actually have a respiratory paralysis and this could be a fatal So, let us see what we should do to avoid electric shock. First of all, we should avoid working in wet condition. We should always keep an insulating mat below our foot so that it gives an added resistance. We should always wear electric, dielectric shoes while working. And we should wear uh, at least class 00, that is 500 volt rated hand gloves so this will give an added resistance in the path of the current and we should ensure that all the portable tools that we are using it should have a 30 milliamps of rccb protection so in case if anything goes wrong the earth leakage the earth leakage it should trip on 30 milliampere so that human body is safe and we should ensure to use only double insulate portable tools so it gives an added insulation of the tools so that the leakage current it doesn't come in contact with the human body or human hand we should use electrically insulated spanners pliers or cutters now we should also ensure that uh, all the electrical equipment it should have a proper double earthing now on earthing uh, i'll make a separate video but this earthing this ensures that uh, it gives a least resistance path to the fault current so that human body doesn't get affected and the current actually takes a path of the earth we should have a regular health checking of earth leakage protection system so that if, if our protection system is working good so in case of earth leakage or fault it will trip and it will protect the human body we should have a regular health checking of earth pits and we should maintain a grid resistance of less than 1 ohm so that it gives a very less resistance to the fault current so fault current, current instead of passing through human body it will pass through the earth and it will eventually go into the earth because it will it will have less resistance than the human body and we should we shouldn't use any substandard measuring equipment we shouldn't use any line tester we should use only non contact type voltage tester LBD2 from Fluke or T plus Pro that also is from Fluke. So, uh, so that's it from uh, my side as of now. So, see you again in the another video. Thank you. Thank you very much.